the quick background history of this. Um, the Appalachian Mountains were named by the Apalachicola Indians from Florida. So same sound. Um, and they're still in Appalachicola, Florida today. And so it's the same. It's that latch, you oh, know, yeah. it's Appalachia. Latch. Cola. Right. Okay, latch. There you go, Appalachia. Yeah, okay. and what happened is we're a very, very poor area. We still are, but especially, you know, in the like formation of the mountains, very oh. poor, very much so like mountain people, <laughs> you yeah. know, um, and some settlers started coming in from other areas in the country, you know, up north, like further south, whatever. And they didn't, they basically didn't think it sounded fancy enough. So they started calling it, you know, by a different name and calling it the Appalachian Mountains, even though uh, that's not what it is. Right. So that's why, that's why like the rest of the country calls it that, but uh, the people who live in them, yeah, the people who live in the Appalachians are like, no, it's Appalachian. And it's funny because when professors come into Appalachian State from other parts of the country, like part of their orientation is like, you will never say Appalachian again. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. So a guy yeah. comes from Boston, he says, oh, this is so beautiful, but you guys are not pronouncing the way it makes it sound hoity-toity. So he goes back to Boston to say it's Appalachian. And you're like, no, don't come back yeah. here. It's Appal ah, interesting. That is funny. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, that's uh, <laughs> I love that kind of history. I just I find it very interesting, actually. I know. My I do too. Name, I think it's cool. My last name Scanlon, and it's S C A N D L E N, and people are like it's Scanlon. I said no. I think when they came over from the boat, you know, the guy at the customs was you know spelled the way he heard it from whoever that guy was when he came over. You know what I mean? And, totally. Uh, for then, it's always a history behind the words. All right, so I want to ask you at, at college, Appalachian State, Latch, yep. okay? I remember that. Um, <laughs> you know, you're studying marketing, and this is interesting because I actually just read an article, or a, I can't remember, but a lady I think was writing this, and she goes, it's funny because no one in college talks about, you know, Facebook advertising, you know, Google AdWords, no. and all that. And I just wondered, did you learn any of that in college in your marketing courses? Heck no. That's, and you know what's what even – Exactly. Yeah, and I'm – it, it's crazy to me. And what's, what's really funny or not funny, but sad to me, um, is last year I went back and I'm going back again this year to my college and I spoke at their entrepreneurship summit last oh, year. Awesome. And, um, so I got to connect with like a lot of like the, you know, the Dean of admissions right. at the business school and you know, whatever. And I was sitting in, or I was like talking in my presentation and all of the students in the room were all business majors, <laughs> all of them. And my verbiage about email marketing and collecting leads and like all of this stuff was like they, their eyes were glazed over. And I was like, wait, 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 are you still not learning this? Cause I mean, I graduated, I don't know, I don't want to date myself, but like 11 years ago. Right. And, um, so I'm like, surely they've, they've picked it up since then. And they were like, no, I was like, do you learn about Facebook ads? Do you learn about, you know, Google AdWords? Do you like you, all this stuff? And they were like, no. Not at all. And I'm like, still like, that's the very main point of advertising for like all major businesses. And we're still not learning it in college. It kills me. That's insane. It's, I yeah. mean, Jessica, I sit there and I, I, I just, it, it boggles the mind. And I guarantee if you ask any professor of advertising, the vast majority aren't going to know the first thing about Facebook ads. It's no. uh, no. But I mean, I just, I, it's insane. And let me give you an example. I ran, when I first started my business, I ran an ad in local rag, you know, it's, it gets 10,000 circulation. I didn't get any, no traffic from that. None. No. You can figure out where traffic comes from. I ran an ad in Facebook ads, my first one for 20 bucks. This is before I found you. I got, you know, just oodles of traffic from that. And I said, this yeah. is, and if you don't advertise uh, just advertising is part of business one one The idea they don't teach us in school. And yet you're paying, what, 20000 a year for it. It boggles the mind. Totally. And, you know, it's, it's so, I don't know. It just, it really does boggle my mind too. And it's something where, like, I consult with a lot of businesses here locally um, yeah. because it's kind of the same thing. They're all very much so stuck in what's always worked. Yeah. And, like, what always worked isn't working anymore because it's a different world. It's dead. It's and dead. So I'm. Yeah. So I'm all the time like, no, you do not need that ad in the newspaper. You do not need that billboard. You know, like you need to be present on social media because you are going to get in front of the exact yeah. right people. And 
it's yeah, it's insane to me that it's not being taught in college. Insane. What um, I'm just curious. So your YouTube channel, you got, and because I love you, I do a YouTube to my thing, and and I love it. I, I'm actually addicted to. It, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's I don't smoke, I don't drink. I'm addicted to YouTube. Um, hey, but, you know, there's worse things. <laughs> I, I, totally, I, absolutely. I and mean, the fact you get paid on it is crazy. But you got 16, I think, what, 16, 17,000 subscribers, something like that. Oh, I have like 18,000 now. Oh, hey, well, I mean, <sighs> are you just like your first video was how long ago? Like a couple years ago, something like that? Or so, yeah, my first video was probably in 2016. Okay. Um, but what happened was I didn't, I wasn't like, trying to grow on YouTube then. Um, I was just putting up videos to help my SEO yeah. on my website. Yeah. And um, I mean, and it, and it worked, but I wasn't growing on YouTube at all. So from 2016, whenever I put up that first video to June of 2017, I had only accumulated about 500 subscribers. And that was like a super slow like that was not, you know, a lot of them were coming from my email list. They were people I had put there. It wasn't like I was organically finding people. Um, and so in June of 2017, um, I remember that I had 500 subscribers because I had 495 and I went into my Facebook group and I was like, guys, get me over 500. Because <laughs> um, I was like, oh my gosh. So that was in June of 17. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to make this a, an actual thing that right. I do and, right. and like a big piece of my business. And so from June of 17 to, you know, we're in early September of 18 to go from 500 to over 18,000 is a pretty big growth in uh, just a little bit over a year. Awesome. So I'm um, how yeah. awesome, just how awesome is that? Are you getting, um, you know, uh, clients for your business, you know, focus and stuff from your YouTube uh, videos, or are they mostly finding you on your blog, mostly finding you on Facebook? What, where do people mostly find you uh, other than the local people? Cause you have a local presence there. I get that. Yeah. Um, so yes, YouTube is my number one refer to my website and to anything else that I do. And it's people, what happens is, um, so when you couple a well tagged, a well positioned YouTube video and a well keyword heavy written blog post, yeah. um, and you embed that YouTube video in that blog post, it basically sends off these like magical unicorn signals to Google. <laughs> right, right. And so a lot of times people will Google something and right. either find my YouTube videos or find my blog post with the YouTube video. So either way, it's because Later, I'm twice. on YouTube. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They'll and, find so your they, blog and they'll see your YouTube and they'll say, let me see what else she has. Exactly. Oh. And, and so I, I really focus on YouTube. Um, I'm a big fan of like not building your business on someone else's land. Right. Um, and I fully understand that like YouTube is not mine, you know? Right. Um, but in this season of my business, it's my focus. Um, yeah. because it works so well for me. So people, people will come in and I mean, I gain about almost 2000 subscribers a month at this yeah. point and people are coming in, they're listening to my videos and then they're, you know, they may not make the decision right then and there to like purchase from me or call, you know, contact me or anything like that, but they are maybe going to my Facebook group or yeah. finding me on Instagram or, you know, getting on my email list or like whatever that looks like. And then down the road, they are purchasing from me when I launch something or open the doors to something. And so it all came as a direct result of YouTube and right. it's magical for me. Do you do any Facebook lives? What's your opinions on Facebook live? Because I, I weigh that back and forth, YouTube versus Facebook live. And I really haven't found a way to make them in conjunction. What's uh, what's your take on Facebook for that regard? Yeah. So I love Facebook and I love Facebook lives. I actually just went live like twice yesterday. So okay. um, it's definitely something I do. And there's just different strategies with that. So usually when I'm doing a Facebook live, I am using it as like the top of a way to send them somewhere else. So for okay. instance, with a YouTube video, like the one I put out this morning is how to get clients in a local market. Oh. And with that, like I didn't, I didn't point them somewhere else. I've just talked about how to do this. I told them to subscribe and that was it. Um, with a Facebook live, I might, 
you know, take one of the tips that I talked about in that video and go live on Facebook about it because the same people who follow me on Facebook are not the same people who exactly. follow me on YouTube. That's, no, that's 100% right. That's what's interesting. Yeah. Cause like you're, you're addicted to YouTube, right? And then there's some people who are like, no, Facebook is my jam. Mm -hmm. And then there's some people who are like LinkedIn is where it's at. So if you want to, you know, make the most impact, you almost have to inundate all the waters. Yeah. And so I just, I find a way to go live. Um, and so I can embrace my Facebook community, but generally I'm pointing them back to a YouTube video okay. or I'm pointing them to my email list in some way, whether it's like a webinar or a freebie or something. How do you, on Facebook Live, the one thing, Jessica, I've noticed is you can't screen share and show your face at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So like, for instance, on your YouTube videos, you'll see Jessica populating up first, and then you'll go to your screen, and then you mm -hmm. see Jessica again. But, I, I mean, how come, I don't, you can't answer for Zuckerberg, but it's just when you're, it seems to me, at least I'm, maybe I'm missing something when you're on Facebook Live, it's just either you or either the screen, but it can't be both. Is that? Well, if you use the built-in plugin, yes. But if you're using a third-party plugin like um, Ecamm on a Mac, um, and if, if anybody doesn't know what I'm saying, E C A M M okay. is the name of that um, app. And it's on, it's only Mac available. That yeah. one particularly is, but if you're using something like Ecamm or OBS software, yeah. which is available on both Mac and PC, right. um, or a software like BeLive.tv, you can actually switch back and forth. Okay. Yeah. So be live. Is that, can you, I use Chromebook, which is a problem, but do you know if that's available on Chromebook by chance? It should be BeLive.tv is a website application. So as long as you can get there, it should be fine. Oh, but I also know yeah. how Chromebooks are. <laughs> so BeLive.com, you TV. said? Or dot, no, dot it's dot .tv. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. well, that's fantastic. Look at this. This is yep. why you get the big bucks, Jessica. Because again, <laughs> folks, what I saw Jessica's thing on, and I don't think I share this yet on this podcast, but maybe i did if i'm being redundant i apologize but i think it's very very important when you know i saw so messing around with facebook ads and all these people said don't boost ads don't boost ads and what a boost ad means folks is that you just you'd say facebook will gladly take your money and quote unquote boost your ad and you don't really know who the heck is getting it boosted to and everyone says don't do that so i was like i guess i shouldn't do that then i i said well but i have this piece of content i like i want to get it out there and i came across jessica's thing she was you can boost your ad as an ad or boost your um, content, you know, as an ad, not just boost it the way Facebook says, but yeah. boost like creating this advertising campaign with that piece of content. And I said, that's exactly what I want to do. And so for me, Jessica, was Medicare planning in California. It could not be any simpler. And I put that sucker out there. I boosted, just like you said, as an ad. And I was getting like a CTR. I think I got like 15% a click through ratio, folks. That just means that's pretty, that's pretty good. Uh, if you yeah. get a CTR of 15%, you're doing something right. And, and I, look, I just follow Jessica's thing. And I'm not saying if you follow her thing, it'll lead you to that. I, and But it worked for me. And so yeah. all these people who said don't boost an ad, there's more to it than that. If you boost an ad as an, uh, don't boost a post on me, if you boost it as an advertising campaign, and Jessica's the only person talking about that. And I guarantee she didn't learn that at, uh, at university. So what, um, any, and I, it's funny you said about the local businesses too, because what I found is a lot of people are not using YouTube. And I think Jessica, they're seeding this, going back to YouTube now, they're seeding the, the, the field to the people who are engaged. And I just wonder, like, I, I, why are not more people using it? It's just, I mean, I don't, if you have a plumbing business, I don't care what it is. Why yeah. would you not have YouTube videos just as, does that make totally. sense? Totally. No, it totally makes sense. And actually, it's really funny that you use plumbing as an example. And I wish I knew the name of his channel, but I was just at a conference speaking um, in Dallas and there was a guy there who is a plumber and has a plumbing channel on YouTube. Um, but so that's funny that you use it as an yeah. example, but no, the reason I think what it is, the reason more people are not using it, which is, I don't think a valid excuse <laughs> is because it's a lot of work. So face, or I'm sorry, not Facebook, YouTube does not like content that's repurposed. YouTube likes content that's made specifically for YouTube. And yeah. there's, there's different types of, um, strategies that go along with that, depending on who your audience is. But basically if you watch any YouTube videos, like 
for instance, in the like educational space, um, business space, whatever, you will notice that we all kind of follow the same formula when it comes to delivering the content. So it's like, we're going to hook you in the beginning and then we're going to roll our intro and then we're going to introduce ourselves. (laughs) So it's like the same like format. Um, and I actually have a script like video on my channel about like how I developed that. But the reason is because that's what works and that's what YouTube likes. Right. And so when people hear something like that, they're like, oh my God, I can't create content for another platform. But for me, I have seen such lucrative payouts from focusing on YouTube that I don't create content for another platform. What I do is I create content for YouTube yeah. and then repurpose that. Yeah, so, right. yeah, you know, you have to, you have to choose what your priority is. Are you, you know, is your priority as a podcaster and then you kind of just want to give people another way to listen. So you throw up, you know, your podcast on YouTube, which is totally fine, but you know that that's not going to go as far as like a, re-recorded video oh, or whatever. Right. Um, that's totally fine. And if you want to be on YouTube and really gathering like the SEO magic and the search magic from YouTube, then you're going to have to be okay with creating the content for YouTube and, and, you know, putting it on a podcast, even yeah. though that might not be what the podcasters want to hear. Right. So you can still repurpose content, but I think a lot of people will start to be intrigued by YouTube and they're like, Oh, that would be really cool for me to use YouTube for my business. But then they realize how much work it is. Um, and they don't. And then the other thing, which I run into a lot and it's mostly with women. I'm not saying men don't struggle with it, but I do, I I do feel like women struggle with it more and, um, at least vocalize it more is being confident on camera. Like, Oh, I don't, I don't like to watch myself. Well, yeah. I don't either. I mean, it's not like I, I just right. sit here and watch videos of myself all day. Right. Can't but, wait. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, but it's, it's one of those things. And I, I tell this story a lot. And um, basically when I first started wanting, I knew that YouTube was a good idea. I knew that, you know, Google owns YouTube and I could get my content out in the world better with YouTube and, yeah. you know, all these things. And I really did want to be that like, quote unquote, infopreneur and sell courses and that kind of thing. And so I was like, okay, I really need to do this. At the time I had just come off of losing like 75 pounds for after my second child and, um, not including baby weight. Like I lost a lot of weight and had my business had picked up and I'd gained about 20 of it back. And so I wasn't like super confident in the way, you know, my weight or the way I looked or whatever. And I was just like, oh, I I just need to wait. When I lose the weight, I'll start. I really, I remember having this like inner dialogue a lot. And finally I was like, no, I'm not losing it. Like that would be great if I was actually losing, but I'm not. So I just need to start. And if I would have waited to lose the weight to start, I still wouldn't have started. So, and I, I wouldn't have 18,000 subscribers that turn into money for me. And so a lot of times that's a big struggle for people is like, I don't feel good on camera. I don't feel good in my own body. I don't feel good. You know, my, my hair looks funny. My, you know, I'm turning a little more gray than I'd like to, or, you know, whatever. Um, so that's a big holdup for people that, I think people should just like jump in feet first and it will help them get over that. That's interesting about the, about the woman thing. I actually, um, that's, uh, I, I, you know, I'm not a woman. I'm I'm married to one, obviously (laughs) I have two daughters and whatnot, but as I wonder, that's too bad. And I frankly, because I, I can almost guarantee you that, um, many women are sitting there thinking, I don't feel good. Like you say, like, I think, well, yeah. I just want to say much more, but there, I know women who are incredibly beautiful. Um, let's just say I'm very close to one. And uh, she would, she doesn't have the, You see what I'm saying? She'd be very uncomfortable yeah. in front of the TV. Cause, and I, that's too bad. Um, I want, I just wanted, this is just, you know, philosophy, I guess it actually pisses me off. Not going to lie to you that the idea that there's a certain image a woman has to appeal to, to feel good about themselves. That, that right. model that we see on whatever the stupid, um, uh, runway i don't even know what it's called anyway it's too bad i i talked to an attorney a lady and she does facebook live and she does um you know she's very interested in the self-help podcast you know this kind of stuff and she's an attorney and she and we're just talking because i just wish there were more women out there doing this kind of stuff because for every you know 
there's a million Gary V's out, Gary Vaynerchuk's out there, but there's yeah. hardly any women in the, in the, and I said, you know, that's a, I never thought about it like that, but that's a, and that might be why the appeal to why I like your stuff, because, you know, I hate to say it, but being a woman is just, is different. And if you look yeah. at my own channel on YouTube, 80% of the people who go, who follow me are men. And yet the, the funny thing is the biggest video I have by far, Jessica, is my one.